Hey guys, let's get more news about Warriors, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Stephen Curry explains how he would run his own NBA franchise based on experience with Warriors. Stephen Curry has seen how one of the best ownership groups in the country took the Warriors from the NBA's doghouse to one of its most memorable dynasties over his 16-year tenure with the franchise. As his career nears its twilight, Curry openly discussed the possibility of becoming a team owner one day and how Warriors owner Joe Lacob's success inspires what will be his philosophy as an NBA owner. I've seen Michael Jordan do it. You have guys in the league now that are taking the necessary steps to be legitimate players when it comes to the NBA, possibly expanding in a couple of years. So, for me, that's definitely on the table. I think I could do a pretty good job of helping sustain how great the NBA is right now and the things that I've learned over my career and what it takes to run a championship organization. The Lacob and Goober family. You see how you treat the players first class and the investment it takes to create that first class experience so we feel taken care of and that allows us to hoop at a very high level. For any panicking Warriors fans, Curry made it clear that he has more to accomplish on the court before he starts pivoting to becoming an NBA owner. Obviously, I know that I have a lot more left to accomplish on the court before I move into any other role within the league. But I definitely want to be a part of the ownership landscape. Curry is entering his 16th season with the Warriors in 2024-25, with the 36-year-old guard still operating as one of the best players in the NBA. He averaged 26.4 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 5.1 assists last season, though the Warriors failed to advance past the play-in tournament and missed the playoffs for the third time in the last five seasons. Steph clearly respects and admires Joe Lacob and the other Warriors owners, but he isn't removed from requesting a change of situation if the team's competitive future continues to look as bleak as it has this summer, with lifelong warrior Clay Thompson leaving the franchise. Curry made it clear that his future with the team he recently signed a one-year extension with can be questioned if the team can't be competitive among the top of the West. I've always said I want to be a warrior for life. At this stage in my career, I feel like that's possible. Winning is always a priority, but obviously you're realistic. You need to shake things up and keep reimagining what it looks like to evolve with what the league is at right now, with where some of these talented teams are now. If it is a situation where you're a bottom feeder and it's just because you want to stay there, I'd have a hard time with that. But I don't think that's going to be the reality. If Curry were a team owner, the possibility of his franchise cornerstone leaving the team would terrify him. Maybe that's always been Curry's goal as the Warriors have pieces to make a win-now push if they so desired. Their failure to trade for Paul George and Laurie Markkinen this summer shows they're waiting for the right place and right time to land Curry his new co-star. Warriors reportedly likely to offer Jonathan Kaminga a five-year deal worth between $140 to $155 million. Jonathan Kaminga is eligible to sign a rookie extension with the Golden State Warriors this offseason, but it doesn't look like he'll be getting a max deal. According to NBA insider Brett Siegel, Kaminga looks likely to get a five-year deal worth around $140 to $155 million. The Warriors will likely be looking to offer Jonathan Kaminga an extension in the ballpark of $140 to $155 million. Kaminga is eligible to sign a max extension worth $225 million, the deal that fellow 2021 draft pick Scotty Barnes and Franz Wagner just got this offseason. The Warriors don't appear to believe he has done enough to warrant them giving him that deal, though. Kuminga did have the best season of his NBA career in 2023-24, averaging 16.1 points, 4.8 rebounds, 2.2 assists, 0.7 steals, and 0.5 blocks per game. The jump in production was thanks to head coach Steve Kerr finally giving the 21-year-old a bigger role and he showed he could deliver when given more opportunities. What the uptick in Kuminga's production did do, though, is put the Warriors in a bit of a difficult position this offseason. 
giving a player anything close to a max deal after just one good season isn't something any team would like to do, but they then risk alienating him if they don't. That's especially the case when it comes to Kaminga and the Warriors, as it hasn't been all roses and sunshine since they selected him with the seventh pick of the 2021 NBA draft. He found playing time hard to come by in his first two seasons and was not happy about it, at all. His frustrations appeared to hit a boiling point in January earlier this year, as a report surfaced that stated Kaminga had lost faith in Kerr after being benched for the final 18 minutes of a game against the Denver Nuggets. He had recorded 16 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists in just under 19 minutes and was understandably upset not to get back into the game. Kuminga did get a whole lot of playing time after that report came out, but the fact that it took something like that wasn't ideal, to say the least. So, as I mentioned, there is a risk of alienating him if the offer is well below what he wants, and by the looks of it, it is. Siegel stated that Kuminga's camp will seek the max, and he isn't the only one reporting that. On the No Cap Room podcast, NBA insider Jake Fisher also said that the youngster and his representatives want the max Jonathan Kaminga is entering the final year of his rookie deal, where the word around the league from various sources is that Kaminga and his representation are looking for a full max extension, which is we just talked about with Brandon Ingram and Jamal Murray and whoever, like if you're not an absolute all-star, Scotty Barnes type of guy for Toronto, Laurie Markkinen for. Utah you know, Trey Young for Atlanta back in the day, because look at what happened to Trey Young and Atlanta since then, it's really hard to get that number. Steph Curry wants to play with LeBron James again after Team USA even if we're teammates or not. For a few weeks this summer we got to see LeBron James and Steph Curry dominate the court in the 2024 Olympic Games men's basketball tournament. The pair were two of a star-studded cast that made up Team USA Basketball. This week, still high off his gold medal win with James, Steph Curry added to the constant rumor of an in-season team-up of the two by telling People magazine, hopefully, there will be more experiences in the future, even if we're teammates or not. Curry's Golden State Warriors and James' former team, the Cleveland Cavaliers have squared off four consecutive times in the NBA Finals over the last decade. Golden State has taken home three NBA titles in those meetings, while the Cavs have taken home only one, it should be mentioned that it was a historic one. From the summer of 2015 to the summer of 2018, two of the league's best, LeBron James and Steph Curry, were at center stage in the NBA Finals. The rivalry never seemed bitter, but it was still present in either the Oracle Arena in Oakland or the then-named Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, now called the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Curry and James, both at the pinnacle of their careers, engaged in some friendly trash talk on the court during their matchups. However, as time passed, they showed a surprising amount of camaraderie towards each other, even teasing the possibility of playing together. This mutual respect between two of the game's greats adds a human element to their rivalry. No example personifies how good the rivals look as teammates. Their sharing the court in the 2024 Paris Olympics last month was nothing short of extraordinary, as the veterans were both key in having Team USA take home the gold. Whether the two best to ever step on the court team up or not, it's nice to see the pair yearning for collaboration. Most competitors keep that distance between them until after retirement and legacies are cemented. Only with Curry and James, we have a clear picture of what their legacies will be. Steph Curry will go down as one of the greatest shooters of all time, if not the greatest. LeBron James, well, the GOAT debate rages on. Even if you weren't in Paris this past summer, any basketball fan felt it in the air. Regardless of your stance on super teams, James and Curry's chemistry was remarkable. Some of the best rivals can be very close behind the scenes. So let's not get up in arms if Steph Curry tests the waters outside the Bay Area for a few hours south in Los Angeles with the Lakers. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Stephen Curry? Leave your opinion in the comments.